The last tutorial I did was on JavaScript best practices. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at JavaScript coding conventions. Obviously, this topic is not as critical, but can still be very important in making your code consistent, predictable, and readable. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Coding conventions are not as readily agreed upon as best practices, but you should adopt some coding conventions and stick with them. If you are part of a larger team, your team may have a set of coding conventions. In this tutorial, I present the conventions I feel most strongly about. But be aware, there will be other opinions. If you feel strongly about a particular convention, leave it in the comment section. It's a great place to discuss those conventions. All right, let's get started. First coding convention I want to talk about is indentation. Now, code without indentation is difficult to read. And even worse than that, perhaps, inconsistent indentation. So if you, sometimes you indent, sometimes you don't, that can sometimes even be worse. Consistency is really important with your code. So here's a general rule with indentation. Basically, that general rule is indent anything between curly braces. So we have our function definition here, and then everything between that is indented. Then here we are defining an object, and everything between that's indented. This if statement, indentation, a couple of loops, a while loop, and a for loop, we have indentation between curly braces. Another example is we are returning an object. So that object is indented because it's inside of curly braces. So that's a good general rule to follow. Indent everything between braces. Now, I prefer four spaces for each level of indentation. Some prefer just two. I think four is more readable. That's why I use it. But that's probably something that just depends upon your preference. But just make sure you're indenting. That can do a lot for the readability of your code. Now, curly braces. We talked about indenting when curly braces are present, and that's a good indication of when you should indent. But make sure you always use curly braces. That's probably the first most important rule about curly braces. They're not always required. For example, this if statement. We could do without the curly braces because there's a single line after the if statement at and after the else statement. So the curly braces are not necessary. But you get in too many problems if you try to be smooth and not type as much code. For example, this if statement is fine like it is, but what if I want to come in later and add another line to that if statement? Well, suddenly that line is no longer part of the if statement. Because without curly braces, it only considers one line as a part of that. So always use curly braces. This for loop also, curly brace not necessary. But just make sure you use it. Now, another convention that we should discuss is where you place the curly braces. Some people will go ahead and put the first curly brace on the next line. That's a preference for certain people. I prefer, and I think it's better, to have the curly first curly brace on the first line. Now, there's some situations where that is necessary. For example, this return statement, it's necessary to have it on the first line. Otherwise, the JavaScript engine will add a semicolon at the end of the return, and then you'll have an error with your code. But most places, you do have the ability to decide if you want it on the first line or the second line. Some people like it on the second line because then they can read the opening and closing of the curly brace. 
I myself think it's more readable putting it all together like this. So that is my preference of where to place the curly braces. All right, next item, white space. White space can be some of the most important stuff in your code. Obviously, white space doesn't affect how your code works at all. But what it does affect is how well you can look at it, read it, figure out what is going on. Now, consistent use of white space is the most important thing, and it improves readability. So let's look at some of the places where I think and where others feel as well that you should include white space, meaning a space character. That's what we're talking about when we are referring to white space. So first off, around curly braces. So notice how I did a space before that curly brace there. All of these curly braces, in fact, have a space. So that's important place to include white space. Now look at the object declaration of what as well. I include a colon for each of the attributes and then there is space between the colon and the actual value. That should be consistent and that makes the object much readable. Array declarations, putting white space after each comma in the elements of an array. Obviously not necessary, but it can help with readability. I think around every operator you should have white space. Notice there's a space before and after all of these operators. Right here, inside the for loop, we have white space before and after the operators. So that is a great place to make sure you have white space. Um, after commas, you can see that with the array declaration here. Now, if I were to define this object without putting these on separate lines, then you'd want white space between the commas. But I think it's even more important to put it on separate lines. That is considered white space as well. By putting a new line there, it is much more readable. And you'll notice that I will very frequently put a blank line between parts of my code. So code that goes together, I will generally include on the very next line. If not, I'll include a blank line. And that helps separate it a bit, makes it a little bit more readable. And notice in the for loop, the white space we have here, after the semicolons, I then use white space. And I think that makes the for loop more readable as well. So white space can be an important characteristic of your code. Next convention, naming conventions. This one gets discussed a lot. Now if you're working in a particular group or organization, there's probably a good chance that they will have their own naming convention. And if that's the case, that's the naming convention you need to go with. If you don't, if you need to come up with your own, then the most agreed upon naming convention for variables and function names is to use camel case. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, first and foremost, those things should be in lowercase to begin with, like I've done here. Now, if there's more than one word, that's where you use camel case. So let's say this is first num. Then the, sec the start of the second word would have a capital letter. And that's what's considered camel case. Some people will put underscores or hyphens between words in a single variable name or function name. But if your organization, your team doesn't have a convention, most developers within JavaScript use the camel case. Now, the other capitalization thing you need to bear, be aware of is to capitalize constructors. So let's say this function was actually a constructor. 
then you would use an uppercase letter at the start of that constructor. That's just a, a way to identify it as a constructor. And that's important because in JavaScript, you need to make sure you use the new keyword when you're dealing with constructors. Now, some organizations also like to use all uppercase letters for a global variable. So if you need to define a global variable, then use all uppercase to define it. And also constants. If you de declare something as a constant with const, some people prefer to use uppercase for that. Now, the last coding convention we're going to talk about are comments, writing comments. Now, even if you're the only one that will be reading your code, you should still include comments. There have been many times where I've come back to some code, and it's only been a week or two, and I have to read through my code to figure out what I was doing. And if I would comment that, that code appropriately, I wouldn't have to deal with that. So here are some things to think about when you're commenting your code. Don't comment the obvious. So don't put so many comments that it becomes more difficult to read than improved documentation. If you're commenting every little thing, it can get like that. So a good rule about what you should comment is your functions. Comment your functions, their arguments, and return value. So here I would do a comment. And some people prefer a multi-line comment before their functions. I'll just do a single line, something like increments num. This is a very simple function, obviously. Receives two values. And then I would describe what those values are and what they're used for. In this dummy function I've created, they're not used at all. And returns an object. And then describe what is in that object that contains the num value. So if you're commenting all of your functions, that's probably what you need to do. Now, you may also need to document any interesting or unusual code that exists. So in addition to documenting functions through comments, you may need to do that if you do something inside of the code that is unusual. And then there are some things that are just complex enough that they deserve a comment. And regular expressions is a good example of that. Sometimes regular expressions are difficult to determine what it's doing just by looking at it. If you include a comment with it, it will help yourself and help others as they come to the code. Now, one last important note about comments is make sure you keep your comments up to date. This is something I'm I'm bad about. Sometimes I will comment and then I'll come in and make changes to my code and then I don't go back and update the the comment to document that code correctly. That can sometimes be worse because then your comment is saying that it's doing one thing and you may have changed it and it's doing something else. So make sure you keep your comments up to date. So there you have it, some coding conventions some coding conventions to go along with our previous tutorial on best practices. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.